Hi guys, in this video I'll show you how to root your Samsung device without using a PC. Yes, that's right, no computer, no Odin, just another Android phone and a few simple steps using Magisk. If you've been looking for a safe and beginner friendly way to root your Samsung phone, this method is perfect for you. I've simplified the process so anyone can follow along even if you've never rooted a phone before. Now before we jump into the routing steps, there are a few important things you need to know. First, make sure to back up all your important data because unlocking the bootloader and flashing firmware will completely wipe your device. Also, unlocking the bootloader will void your warranty and may disable features like Samsung Knox, Secure Folder and Samsung Pay. Even though this method is beginner friendly, but I highly recommend watching the entire video before you try it on your phone. Great, before we dive in, let's quickly go over everything you'll need to get started. First, your Samsung device, the one you're planning to root. Second, you'll need another Android phone with active internet access, a compatible USB cable to connect the two phones. And finally, the most important part, the correct firmware file downloaded specifically for your Samsung model and variant. So grab your devices, get comfortable, and let's get started. All right. Now the first step in routing any Samsung device is unlocking the bootloader. For this video, I am using the Samsung Galaxy S23. But don't worry, this method works on most Samsung devices including the M series, A series, S series and many other models. To begin unlocking the bootloader, we first need to enable developer options. So go to settings, scroll down to about phone, then tap on software information. Now, tap on build number 7 times. This will activate developer options. Once that's done, go back to the main settings menu, scroll down and open developer options. Now, before we proceed, you might notice that auto blocker is turned on. This feature can block some of the actions we need to perform, so we need to disable it. Just search for auto blocker in your settings, open it and turn it off. Once that's done, Go back into developer options and you should now see the option for OEM unlocking. Go ahead and enable that. Important note, if your phone is from the US or Canada, most carrier locked models can't unlock the bootloader. Unfortunately, there's no fix for this right now. Once that done, also enable USB debugging option. It allows our Samsung device to communicate with your computer over a USB connection. Now that both options are enabled, go back to settings and remove your Samsung and Google accounts from the device. Removing your accounts now helps make sure you won't get locked out later. And finally, also remove any screen lock, like a pin, pattern, or password. This part isn't mandatory, but it's a smart precaution to prevent potential issues during the process. Once that's all done, it's time to unlock the bootloader. First, connect your Samsung device to another Android phone you can use either a USB OTG adapter or a Type-C to Type-C cable depending on the ports available on your devices. Once connected, you should see a charging notification on your Samsung device. That means the connection is successful. Now reboot your Samsung device. As soon as the Samsung logo disappears, quickly press and hold both the volume up and volume down buttons at the same time. Keep holding until you see a blue warning screen about installing a custom OS. Now, press and hold the volume up button again to confirm and unlock the bootloader. Next, you'll see an option to unlock the bootloader. Just press the volume up button again to confirm. Keep in mind, this will wipe all your data. So hopefully you've already backed up anything important. On the boot screen, you'll notice a warning message saying the bootloader is unlocked. Don't worry, that's completely normal. Your phone will still boot into the system and you'll be able to continue using it as normal. Now, let's wait for the device to boot up. And there we go, the device is now booted up. Let me head into settings and quickly enable developer options again. And yes, as you can see, the message bootloader is already unlocked is now showing. That means we've successfully unlocked the bootloader of our device. Now, before moving on, just re-enable USB debugging because the reset turned it off. 
Now it's time to move on to step 2, downloading the firmware for your Samsung device. I'm downloading the firmware on my PC, but don't get it twisted, this is still a no PC routing method. You can download the same file directly on your phone too. Now to get the correct firmware, first find your device's serial number and note it down. Then in your browser, search SAMFW and open the site. Here, click on other tools and then check IMEI option. Now scroll down and enter your serial number. And remember, don't share it in the comments. It can reveal your IMEI numbers. And there it is. We've got all the key details, region, exact model, activation date, and more. Now scroll down and click the second option. This will show all firmware available for your device. On your phone, go to settings and then software information and check your build number. It'll look something like S911BXX. Match these build number with the list and here's mine, ending in XL2. Just tap on it to download. Now scroll down and click on download from Sam FW server to start downloading the firmware either on your PC or phone. The download has started, but I'm going to cancel it since I already have the exact same firmware saved on my PC. All right, once the file is downloaded, just extract it. And here's my extracted firmware folder. Now I'm going to copy the entire folder to my second phone. All right, here's the full firmware folder I just copied to my second phone. All right, it's time for step three, creating the Magisk patched file. Now on this phone, download two apps, Z Archiver and the Magisk app. You'll find both links in the description below. Okay, open the Magisk app, tap on install, and then choose select and patch a file. Next, browse your file manager, locate the AP file from the firmware folder and select it. Once selected, just tap let's go to start the patching process. Magisk will now start patching the file. This might take a minute, so just sit tight and let it finish. And yes, the Magisk patched file is saved in the downloads folder by default. Let's quickly open the file manager to confirm. And here is our patched file. Now we need to extract this file, so I'll go ahead and do that. Here's our extracted Magisk patched folder. Next, select all the files inside the patched folder and archive them into a .tar file. We'll be using this .tar file to root our Samsung device. So here's the .tar file. Let's move it into the firmware folder just to keep everything in one place for easy access. Now it's time for step four flashing the Magisk patched firmware file to your Samsung device. First, download and install the Eros Flash Tool app using the link in the description below. In the Eros app, tap on the Add File option to begin loading your patched firmware. First, select the BL file from your firmware folder. Next, choose the Magisk patched AP file we created earlier. Then add the remaining files, CP and either CSC or Home CSC. CSC will wipe your data completely while Home CSC keeps your data safe. Choose based on what you need. Once all files are added, connect your Samsung device in download mode to begin the process and root your Samsung phone without a PC. To enter download mode, follow the same steps as before. First, connect your phone via Type-C to Type-C or OTG cable. Restart your device and when the Samsung logo disappears, hold volume up plus volume down together. When the blue warning screen appears, just press volume up once and you're now in download mode. When your device enters download mode, the Eros app will show a pop-up. Just tap on OK to allow the access. As you can see, our device is successfully connected to the Eros Flash Tool app. Now, go to the Options tab, make sure Auto Reboot is enabled, and also turn on Skip MD5. 
This isn't mandatory, but it helps speed up the flashing process. If you don't skip it, the MD5 verification can take three to four minutes, depending on your firmware size. Once that's done, just hit the start button to begin flashing the Magisk patched files. The flashing process usually takes a few minutes. Once it's complete, your phone will reboot automatically, so wait for the device to fully boots up. All right, flashing is done and the device is rebooting. The first boot may take a few minutes, so be patient. If your phone boots into recovery mode, don't worry, just format the device, then reboot it again. Now wait for the device to fully boot up. All right, the device has booted up. Let's open the Magisk app and see the magic. And yes, Magisk is installed but it's asking to reboot the device. So go ahead and tap on OK to reboot the device. So let the device complete its reboot. It won't take long. Now the device has rebooted, let's open the Magisk app again. And yes, as you can see, Magisk is fully installed and running. The version is 28.1. And the best part, we achieved full root access without using a PC. Let's also confirm it using the root checker app. So I'll open it up and verify the root status. And there you go. Root access is successfully verified. That means everything worked perfectly and your Samsung device is now fully rooted without a PC. And that's it for the step-by-step -step guide on how to root your Samsung phone without a PC. A quick, easy and safe method. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. This is Jarvis signing off.